two weeks ago with hundreds of protesters descending on New York's financial center, voicing a deep-seated opposition to the concentration of wealth in America. And it has not let up. The protesters have stayed put, forming into a base camp of outrage with a simple manifesto. We are the 99% that will no longer tolerate the greed and corruption of the 1%. And indeed, the movement only grows, fueled by anger over mass arrests and police corralling and using pepper spray on protesters. A video that went viral and has sparked an internal investigation. Add to that a furor over blocked emails. Those, those with Occupy Wall Street references met with the message from Yahoo that your message was not sent. Suspicious activity has been detected. Yahoo has apologized, saying it was a misfire by an erroneous spam filter. But one can imagine the outcry if the same thing happened in Iran or at Glenn Beck's Restoring Honor rally. The mounting injustices drew the ire of filmmaker and activist Michael Moore in an appearance with MSNBC's Lawrence O'Donnell last night. How can I live in a country that arrests 100 nonviolent people and doesn't arrest a single one of these bankers or the people that caused this collapse? This With the meditation flash mobs, we are bringing a Me and the Lord, we got an understanding. We're on a mission from God. He's an independent financial analyst and founder of Karmabank.com, and Monsef Sheikh Ruhu, who's a professor of international finance at HEC, the Paris International Business School. Hi. Thanks very much, both of you, for being on the program. Max, if I could start with you, I mean, what is it about Goldman Sachs? How does he manage to, to turn the figures around like that? Well, Goldman Sachs are scum. I mean, that's the bottom line. Uh, they basically have co-opted the uh, U.S. government. They've co-opted the Treasury Department, the Federal Reserve functionality. Uh, they've co-opted the Obama administration. Barack Obama, uh, you know, dances to Goldman Sachs' tune. And they are really crooked and abominable in what they've done. Uh, you just remember Hank Paulson held the Congress hostage, mm. took him in the back room and said, give us $700 billion, we're going to crash this market. He's an arsonist. He's, he's an outlaw. And yet, He's given You're praise. Right. Treasury Secretary Hamilton, who was CEO at, uh, at uh, Goldman Sachs. Sure, but if you go down the list, they're all Goldman Sachs scum. Whether it's Hank Paulson, whether it's uh, Geithner has very close ties to Goldman Sachs, and of course, all these banking uh, bonuses are paid out to all their cronies who are Goldman Sachs scum. And America, for some reason, has allowed this coup d'etat to take place, a silent coup d'etat, where the Goldman Sachs and their friends now control the U.S. government, and they are manipulating. Prices. Okay, okay, my. So they then um, bet against their own clients to whom they sold these empty boxes. They coerced the federal government to get rid of their main competitors in Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns who were selling these empty boxes. They co-opted foreign banks who owned these empty boxes who went through tremendous pain and suffering. And uh, they are also now caught in front-running every single trade on the New York Stock Exchange with this high-frequency trading scandal. They're literally stealing $100 million a day. Uh, Goldman yeah. Sachs is stealing every day on the floor of the exchange. They should be in The Hague, they should be uh, taken up on financial terrorism charges, and they should all be thrown in jail. They're, well, they're scum. I wouldn't be as extreme, but uh, Why not? Uh, just, just to say that the situation... 3.5 billion profits. So the shareholders are benefiting from this. They were given 3.5 billion from but, taxpayers but in America. They called them, it a profit. They, they, they made didn't them. make them, they course, stole them. I if, if, if I go to a bank and I steal $1,000, you're going to say, oh, I made $1,000? That's absurd. The shareholder made money. That's the ultimate tragedy. Goldman, here's more. Here's the last of my money, Goldman. Take it. Here's the last money I have, you crooks. Take the last money I have. You're, you're crooks. It's disgusting. Well, uh, it's good to be emotional. Goodbye for now. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> ruled right now by fear. Uh, investors and the big money, the smart money, uh, I'm talking about uh, the big funds, the hedge funds, the institutions, they don't buy this rescue plan. Uh, they, they basically, um, they know the market is toast. They know the stock market is finished. The euro, as far as they're concerned, they don't really care. 
they're moving their money away to safer uh, assets uh, like treasury bonds, 30-year uh, bonds, and the U.S. dollar. Um, so it's not going to work. We keep hearing stuff. If you could see the people around me, jaws have collectively dropped at what you just said. I mean, if we, we appreciate your candor. However, it doesn't help the rest of us, does it, or the rest of the Eurozone? I, I would say this. Listen, I would say this to everybody who's watching this. This economic crisis is like a cancer. If you just wait and wait thinking this is going to go away, just like a cancer, it's going to grow and it's going to be too late. What I would say to everybody is get prepared. Uh, this is not a time right now to um, wishful thinking the government is going to sort things out. The governments don't rule the world. Goldman Sachs rules the world. Goldman Sachs does not care about this rescue package, neither does the big funds. So actually, what I would, I, I would actually tell people, I want to help people, uh, people can make money from this. It isn't just traders. What they need to do is learn about how to, in, how to make money from a, a downward market. Uh, the first thing people should do is protect their assets, protect what they have. Because in less than 12 months, uh, my prediction is the savings of mil millions of people is going to vanish. Uh, and this is just the beginning. So I would say be prepared and act now. The biggest risk people can take right now is not acting. Alessia Rastani, thank you very much for talking to us. You dream about the economy at night? I try not to. And those kind of principles. Uh, I think that, well, that's a loaded question. I think that we need some adjustments. And I, and I think the protesters <laughs> represent a, lo a growing number of uh, Americans who feel that, that there is a class warfare and, and the rich are waging a great war on, on the middle class and working class. Uh, and poor Americans that, that are brutality angry protesters we've uh, we've gotten used to seeing this during the arab spring but now new york i mean how, how far could the correlation go do you think well the parallels are obvious but but it does remain to be seen whether whether this will be transformative in the same way that uh, the arab spring was and i think uh, i think all protest movements like this tend to start off as a form of political theater and it it remains a question of whether it can uh, transition into something more meaningful and uh, and Often it doesn't tend to do that, but, but as we see now, of course, these protests are not just taking place uh, on Wall Street, but are now starting to spread across the country, which is a sign that there, there really is something going on here that, that will start to spread even further. And, uh, and that's the, the type of uh, situation that, that could lead to a, an American spring, as it's being dubbed now. But the, uh, the question, really, in, in terms of whether this will be a transformative movement or will still remain at the stage of political theater, is whether there can be a, a coordinated message um, sent through these protests or whether it really is just a um, sort of an uncoordinated um, bunch of people who, who have a wide variety of grievances, which, well, of course, we, we find... We are, we are seeing the minor effects of an avalanche effect uh, spreading across uh, Northern America at the moment. Uh, we've just heard reports of uh, more unrest in Boston as well, up on the Northeast Coast. Uh, but you mentioned moments ago the, the, uh, the issue of political theater. Now, now it's a politically sensitive time in Washington. Well, what do you think is going through the minds of the top people there? Surely perhaps uh, the Republicans uh, could use this to square off with uh, President Obama, saying, you see, here's the unrest, the economic woes, your presidency, your, your term is failing. Uh, I, I think certainly this will be turned into a, a form of political um, um, infighting as well. But I, I think what's probably more interesting and, and more important and, and potentially transformative about this movement is the fact that they didn't locate the, this um, on, on Washington, or at least not originally on Washington. So, so I think this does represent uh, the people's realization that that, that that relationship and that nexus is, is the real enemy. And, uh, and that, in, a, in and of itself, I think, rep makes this a, a different type of protest movement than one we've seen in recent years. James Corbett, editor of the independent news website CorbettReport.com. Mr. Gosling, the scenes that we've been seeing, uh, police brutality, angry protesters, well, this isn't the Middle East or North Africa. I mean, this is going on in New York City. It's being called uh, the American Spring. Do you think that's a fair comparison? Well, it's American autumn, but yeah, certainly the idea of Occupy Wall Street, I think, is, is a brilliant one because the present people who have been running the American financial system over the last 10, 20 years or so have clearly made a mess of it. And I'd like to see some of these very ordinary people, the thousands that are out there right now, actually, I think they could do a far, far better job. So I'm very happy to see this happen. Uh, the thing is, what's happened is particularly the American people, but also others of us in the West, have been caught in a financial rat trap by this 
this lot. And, uh, you know, there are lives of billions of people are being affected by it. So I'm absolutely happy that, uh, that this is happening in the United States. And, of course, not happy about the, and I think it's absolutely right to call it censorship, the lack of coverage. Uh, it seems this is a great deal of embarrassment, that this is simply, that is what is actually going on here. Uh, particularly here in the, in the UK press as well, there's been very, very little coverage of it. Uh, I mean, we're happy to report these kinds of things when they happen in other parts of the world, but this is happening in our own backyard, and it's hardly being reported here in Britain at all. And that's because of the massive embarrassment factor. Uh, the financial elite have made a mess of things, and it's time to sort them out. Right, but well, Tessa, it's difficult to say at this stage because a year is a long time, well, a week is a long time in politics. That's a long, long time in the future. But certainly Obama seems to have completely failed to inspire not just the U.S. people, but the world. It seems he's more like a kind of glove puppet for the, uh, the elite of Wall Street. And, and let's not forget the private military companies and the military industrial complex in the U.S. This is all becoming one kind of uh, organization, a kind of shadow government. And, and actually Obama uh, is, is, is not really a player in this kind of thing. So I, I think possibly it will be almost irrelevant who gets in as the next president, unless it's someone who's prepared to deal with this financial elite. All right. Thanks very much for your thoughts there. Investigative journalist Tony Gosling talking to us live from Bristol. To, to, to get the, ha the country out of the hands of the corporations. There's no reason anybody should not... Anybody should go hungry, you know? This is, there's no reason anybody should not have a place to stay at night, you know what I'm saying? Like, we have enough money, we have enough technology to make our home into a paradigm. I'm here because I can no longer sit and watch 1% of the population control uh, the majority of the population's wealth. I'm here because I'm a student and I have to drop out of college next semester because my dad just lost his job two months ago after being the same company for 26 years and he can't afford to put me in college anymore. I was laid off Thanksgiving week. I was in the working industry for over 30 years. I'm here to help rebuild the society in a way that serves the people and serves the dreams that I've had for this country my whole life. are part of this global, what some call or I call the global insurrection against banker occupation. Has there been any communication between, let's say, the Tel Aviv, Wall Street, Athens, Cairo, Tunis? This is a global uprising. Uh, do you see any of that global yeah. communication happening vis-a-vis -vis Twitter and other sites or just uh, in, in any way? Yes, I receive emails and messages and letters from all over the world, especially Israel and uh, Turkey and even Iran, everywhere. I, I, I see it all, and I just encourage everybody, get together as fast as you can, stop all that uh, lefty factioning stuff that leftist men love to do. Women, come together, and it's ours, and we'll take it, and we'll fix it in a heartbeat. All right, I want to now talk about solutions, because we started out the interview saying we would get into some possible solutions for Occupy Wall Street, and we promised people in the Occupy Wall Street, then we would talk about some solutions. Now, uh, let me put something out there, which is that the, um, the blood that makes the occupation of the banksters work, their, their stock and trade, is their stock price. So therefore, in, in order to attack the banksters, one first has to accept that you need to decapitalize them. Not decapitate them, that could come later. But initially, they need, to be decap they need to be decapitalized. That is to say, drive their stock price down in some way. I believe that if we stay strong, I believe that if we stay strong, the seed that we're playing today, the seed that we're playing today, will grow into a movement, will grow into a movement, that will get the Carpet greed. Off our ass. Off our ass. Thank you.
hearts in mysterious ways.